Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. In this video, we're going to be taking an expression I recently wrote and uh, breaking it down and showing you how it works. Mikey's Production Tips is brought to you by Cinema Spice. After Effects tools, video overlays and backgrounds, and sound effects. This expression is for making a wiggle that reacts to the markers on your layer, and it's quite handy. Um, because wiggle on its own really doesn't start or stop and if you wanted to be able to control that um, you can create some expression controllers and um, and keyframe those but I uh, was actually talking with a friend of mine Andrew Embry uh, some of you might uh, know him um, and he was asking about triggering the wiggle off of markers and so this is the solution uh, that I came up with because someone, when someone gives me a challenge, I got to take it. Um, and so, and how it works is as you play, you can see here, the, the wiggle starts during the marker duration and it stops. And you can see it kind of eases into it and it wiggles and then it eases back out. And so let's talk about this expression. The, all the code will be in the... Um, in the description so you can just copy it and paste it um, it's pretty robust so it should just work on anything and uh, let's take a look at it now I'm on the latest version of After Effects so you can see I've got the new expression editor which is really handy to be able to see what's going on so let's just kind of walk through this expression and I'll just kind of talk about it so first we declare the three variables we got the wiggle speed wiggle amplitude and the ease dur or ease duration and what this is is if I want to go in here and add some sliders or you know some some controls I can do that or you could just come into the expression and change the speed and amplitude and duration uh, to match what you want now this top of here it says try with the curly bracket now one of the be uh, new benefits of this new expression um, editor is that I can collapse things like this and with this try and then down here the return of it, the catch, um, the beginning and the ending of this try loop, what it's, what it's doing is it's saying, all right, try this out, and if it doesn't work, as in if it catches an error down here at the bottom, then just output the value. So it's trying all of this, and why I have that is if I come in here and I were to delete all the markers, then all of this code inside of this try catch loop is depending on markers and if there are no markers then it would throw me an error um, and so instead of displaying an error saying there's something wrong with your code it's just saying ignore that and just output the current value and so that's what it's doing so that's kind of cool and then you can also see in the new expression um, editor we have a line numbers so if there is like an uh, something wrong so if I were to come in here and see mess that up well I can come here and you can see error at line 22 or 23 sorry and it's a, there's a finality without a try so it's saying well you've got the ending of the try catch error right there um, but you don't have the beginning of it because I had commented that out so that those are some new nice things also you can see um, we've got some color things as so as I add the variable that color codes it automatically and then there's also completion so if I were to come in and write if you can see it automatically starts to complete alright so that's just a quick uh, overview of the new stuff let's go back into this so we've got this try catch loop um, so that's really not any of the code that's just making sure it, does, it you know doesn't break on you so let's look at this first thing um, it's an if else statement so what an if else statement is, is it's saying if this is happening or if this is true, then do this. And if it's not, else, do that, right? So we have if and inside parentheses, you can see as I, as I go through this, as I hit that parentheses, that turns green and the last one turns green saying these are um, what's inside of this. So if time, so the current time where your time indicator is, is greater than or equal to uh, this layer so it's this current layers marker um, nearest key so where the where is the nearest key um, based on its time so this layer dot marker now let's put in a marker just so we can kind of talk about that so there's the marker right there 
And so it's looking for that. So this layer marker nearest key. So right now that's the nearest key. Um, and it's based on time. And it outputs a time. So this is asking if the time placement of that key, if it's greater than, or if time, this current time, if it's greater than this, the time of that keyframe or that marker. And if it is, then t, the variable t, and I can actually come in here and write variable here just to keep things a little bit cleaner. Uh, variable t equals the this layer marker nearest key time and the index of that. So it's, it's finding the index of this variable or this marker, which would be one. So if this so what it's asking is if this current time indicator, if it's beyond that marker, then t equals 1. Or if there's multiple markers, it equals whatever the index of that marker is. Now, if it's not, if it's before it like that, then what it's saying is t equals that minus 1. So if, since that's 1, it would be 0. If it was 2, it would be 1. And so... The reason why I'm doing that is because nearest key. Um, the verbiage in order to find where your nearest marker is, is the nearest key. And there's a problem that I discovered when I was writing this is I could be right here and that's the nearest key, but I want it to look at this one, right? So as you add markers, you hit the, the star button, I don't uh, the asterisk button on your 10 keypad, and then you hold down alt or option and you hover over the, th the marker, and then you can drag it out during the duration. Now, the issue is, is during this duration right here, I'm still in the middle of the duration, but there's the key, the marker is the beginning, is that's where it counts it. And then that marker, the beginning of that, is actually closer, it's nearer to, that, um, to my indicator than that one is. So I gotta account for that. And so what it's saying is if it's, before that marker, which this is, that's the nearest key, but it's before it, it's actually going one back and looking at that one. Okay, the next part is we're creating another variable called key one, and I called it key one because it just your it's your key, your keyframe, but key is a reserved thing, so I just added a one to it. And when I was first writing this expression, I had multiples of these, and I had you know key one, key two, and things like that, and that's just old code that I hadn't changed. So this really can be anything, like marker would work, um, or M-A-R, mark. So this key one is this layer's marker.key, and you're putting in that index, right? which is, was defined in this first if then statement. And so it's either, so where my current time indicator is now, that would be one because that's the first one. If it was up here past this, this one, it would be two. If it was before that one, it would be zero. Okay, so then we've got another if else statement. And this is where all of what is happening, making the wiggle happens. So if you wanted this to do something else besides wiggle, like rotation or something like that, you can change up the code in here. So we first have an key one, right? So this is your keyframe, um, dot time. So it's asking if the time of this original keyframe or this marker, if it's less than your current time, which it is now. So you can see this is less than that. It's before that. And if the time, your current time, is less than the key1.time plus key1.duration. So when you add a duration to this, it will give that whole value right there. And so what that's saying is if this current time indicator is in between the beginning and the end of the duration, if those two things happen, then let's do all of this stuff. And so what I have here is two more variables. And this is in is to help um, with the ease. And so I've got this ease duration of 10 frames. 
And so what that means is it takes 10 frames to go from zero up to full. And then at the end, 10 frames go from full down back to zero. And so how I do that is with a linear expression. So we've got S and then SS. And it made sense in my mind why I named those that. I can't remember why now. I think it was just, you know, start and then SS because it's the second part, second. And so what it is is a linear expression is, is mapping the value from the very start up 10 frames. And as it does that, you can see linear, so time, as time goes across this keyframe duration. And you start with... How a linear expression works, let me just type this out up here. Linear input, and then you got its start and end value, and you map it to a new start and a new end value, right? So as the input goes from this value to that value, output this new value to that new value, okay? So that's how an, a linear expression works. And it's really handy. Um, um, and so we've got this linear as time goes from uh, key one dot time, so that's the beginning, to key one dot time plus this E's duration. And I go, I have in here, I'm timesing this by this comp dot frame duration, that's to make it into the current um, frame rate of the piece. If this was at 30 frames or 60 frames or 24 frames, it wouldn't matter. It would make sure that this is frames right here. This is the right amount of frames and not by seconds. And then as it does that, change that value from 0 to 1. And why I did 0 to 1 is because I want that to be um, something I can times as a, as a fraction, as a percentage, right? Because if you take 100 and times it by 0.5, it makes 50, right? So 1 is represented of 100, 0 is rep represented of 0. So that's the beginning. Now the second one, we have to take it from the duration backwards, right? So we have the key dot time plus the key duration. So that's the ending of this. And then we have to minus that ease duration. So we're going back 10 frames. And that's the beginning and then the second part is that key time plus key duration so as it goes from minus 10 frames to the end then instead of going from 0 to 1 we're going 1 to 0 because we want to go from full down to 0 and then what we need to do is just basically write a wiggle expression we have the wiggle we have the wiggle speed and then after the second one the wiggle amplitude is where we're taking these scalars, this S and this SS, and applying it to the amplitude. So when it's in the middle, away from the 10 frames, then S equals 1 and SS equals 1, right? When it's at the beginning, S equals 0, SS equals 1. At the end, S equals 1 and SS equals 0. So only time in the, is in the middle when it equals... 1. And so 1 times 1 is 1 times the amplitude is 1, and it doesn't change anything. If it's at the beginning, there's a 0 in the mix, and so it'll make everything 0. At the end, there's a 0 in the mix, it'll make everything 0. So when you do this, it actually will go in and it'll ramp up the amplitude from 0 up to whatever you have it set, and then at the end, from whatever you have it set down to 0. All right. Now, you have this, uh, again, this if statement, if it's not within that duration, so if it's right here in between the durations, then just output the value. So it's saying if, if it's not within the duration of a marker, then don't do anything. And that's, uh, that's kind of a long explanation of how this works, and you're probably just going to copy this and paste it. Um, but I wanted to go through and talk about a little bit about um, expressions and kind of why you do things and how you do things. Um, so hopefully you learn some stuff. And what's cool about this is we can come in here and just add as many as we want. And it'll just, it'll work. 
So a good way um, of adding some wiggle that's a little more controllable. It's a little bit of a of work setting this up, but again, you have the option of just copying and pasting. So hopefully this is um, something that you'll use. Let me know in the comments if you think this is valuable. And thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.